Hi there! In this lecture we integrate the knowledge you've learned with two patient cases. So we will share our decisions. Please think with us, would you have made the same decisions? So the first patient is a male, 65 years old, with a medical history of end-stage renal disease due to polycystic kidney disease. He was on hemodialysis for two years. He received a renal transplantation of donation after cardiac death one week ago. The donor was 66 years old. The cold ischemia time 16 hours and the mismatch 111. He receives prednisolone, tacrolimus and salcept. There's still no urine output, which means there's no function of the kidney. The ultrasound is normal and the blood pressure 150-90. Tacrolimus levels are within limits. The patient has no fever. You are worried and will look for the cause of the renal dysfunction. As explained earlier in this module, there are different causes which can explain renal dysfunction early after renal transplantation. Do you still know these causes? And what is the pathophysiology? And how can you differentiate? And what is the treatment? So write it down for yourself with the patient in your mind. Then take a second to look at the table for the most common causes, the diagnostic investigations and the results in this patient. Ultrasound showed normal blood flow and no signs of thrombosis. There was no hydronephrosis or swelling of the kidney, so an urological obstruction was not likely. Recurrent disease is not possible with ADPKD. There was no volume contraction. There was a normal blood pressure. And the levels of tacrolimus were within normal range, so toxicity was excluded. There was no urine output, so urine cultures to exclude infection were not possible. But there were no signs of infection. So in the first place we thought that this patient might have an acute tubular necrosis. The source and the age of the donor and prolonged ischemia time are risk factors. We could not exclude acute rejection. A renal biopsy was taken. We will now ask Dr. Baima to comment. To begin with, let's have a look at the normal histopathology of the kidney in order to be able to understand the changes we will see in the renal transplant biopsy. By looking at a time zero biopsy, that is a biopsy taken at the time of transplantation, we can appreciate the normal light microscopic findings. In a cortical biopsy, we will encounter glomeruli with capillary loops, the mesangium, which includes specialized cells around the blood vessels, and the glomerular basement membrane, which is lined by a regular epithelium, the podocytes. There's no inflammatory infiltrate here, no tubulitis. There are also no signs of chronic changes in the interstitium, like fibrosis or tubular atrophy. Usually, a biopsy will contain multiple arterioles and a number of larger arteries. Here we see an arteriole that is completely normal and an artery without internal fibrosis or signs of inflammation. Now let's have a look at the transplant biopsy. From the overview, it becomes apparent that there are architectural changes indicative of a background of chronic lesions, likely to be donor-derived. There's focal global glomerulosclerosis, which means scarring of the glomeruli. Some foci with interstitial fibrosis and tubular atrophy, and this larger artery here shows intimal fibrosis. Although nonspecific, the changes are usually associated with hypertension and ischemia. The tubular epithelium is quite different than in the normal renal biopsy. Over here, the nuclei are irregular, having different sizes from cell to cell and sometimes cells are missing and the tubular basement membrane is bare. In some instances, we see remnants of epithelial cells in the tubular lumina. All these signs are indicative of acute tubular necrosis. That the tubular epithelium is already regenerating may be signified by the presence of mitotic figures. Another important finding in this biopsy is the presence of inflammatory cells, mostly lymphocytes that invade the tubes, thereby causing tubulitis. Over here, we see a non-atrophic tube with a number of lymphocytes in the tubular epithelium. This is very suggestive of a component of acute rejection. 
although the previously discussed tubular necrosis could also be accompanied by an inflammatory infiltrate in the interstitial areas, the presence of tubulitis is an important sign of acute rejection. So this patient had an acute tubular necrosis and an acute cellular rejection. For the acute tubular necrosis, we have to be patient and monitor daily whether urine output will appear. For the rejection, the patient was treated with high-dose prednisolone. Two days later, the urine output increased and renal function improved afterwards, and the patient went home with an acceptable renal function. So in general, it's of importance to note that delayed craft function and early rejection episodes have a synergistic adverse effect on renal function and also on allograft survival. So what should we learn from this case? Acute tubular necrosis is characterized by changes of the tubular epithelium. The source and the age of the donor and prolonged ischemia time are risk factors for delayed graft function. And the presence of tubulitis in renal biopsy is an important sign of acute cellular rejection.